Hey everybody, I'm Shauna and welcome back to my channel, Shauna Missy Me HD, where I strive to inform, encourage, and motivate you to achieve your educational goals by helping you gain admission into health-related undergrad and graduate programs. And today we are talking about medical school, specifically things you need to know about the MCAT. Ah. <laughs> Don't get me started. But before we get started, you guys know what to do. Go ahead and press subscribe. Make sure you press the notification bell so that you're the first to know when I release the next video. If you haven't already checked out my video where I talk about my MCAT experience, I'll link it here. And then you can also look forward to a follow-up video that talks about the MCAT in detail. As far as how it's scored, the type of questions you can expect, the sections, how it's broken down, and then also the timing of the test. So before we get started, I think it's best to just kind of understand like what is the MCAT for? Like what is the purpose? Understanding the purpose can help you prepare better, at least respect the test and why you have to take it. So MCAT stands for Medical College Admissions Test. And every person who goes to a medical school in the US, for the most part, is required to take the MCAT. Now, why is it important? If you think about it, in order for medical schools to be able to assess a student's ability across the board, they have to have some type of standardized exam that every student who applies takes, okay? Because we're all coming from different undergrads, different majors, and different backgrounds, but we're all trying to get into the same spots, right? So they have to have something that kind of connects all of us together that they can compare. And the MCAT is one of those things. So it's very important and you almost have to kind of use the MCAT to your advantage. If you come from a low tier undergrad that barely produces any uh, students who matriculate into medical school and you don't get a whole lot of hype or a whole lot of shine because of where you attend undergrad, then the MCAT can be used to your advantage because if you score very well, then, you're, then you will stand out. And then the second part of really understanding the MCAT is like, what are they testing you for? It's going to give the medical schools a chance to test your ability to critically think, okay, reason, and to be able to problem solve. That is what the MCAT identifies. Who can critically think, who can reason, and who can problem solve. Because that is what being a doctor is pretty much all about. Taking a situation, being thrown with a couple of symptoms and blah, 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 and you taking that information to determine what is wrong with the patient. So it's very important to be able to pick up on clues and hints and, and have a background knowledge of what's common and what's not common and stuff like that, you know, to be able to create a overall picture idea of what's going on and to be able to treat the patient. So that is what the MCAT test, okay? So it's not so much how much science knowledge do you have and if you are a biology major or a chemistry major you're going to know all the science in the world or you're going to do great on the MCAT that's not what it's testing it's not testing your, you on your facts it's going to test on how well you're able to apply your facts critically how well are you able to reason based off of your science foundation can you problem solve based off your background science foundation that is what the MCAT tests so I like to break this down into five different categories that I think you guys really need to know about before you actually decide to start studying and or take the MCAT exam. So number five is just simply knowing the registration process. When is the test offered? How much does it cost? How many times can I actually take the test in one year? The MCAT is offered from January throughout September. And you may think, okay, there's plenty of time, I have plenty of options, but know that the exam only has a specific number of test dates, okay? So don't think that you can just sign up for any date uh, that falls between January and September. Make sure you are looking on the website, you look and see exactly which dates are actually offered for the month you are interested in taking your exam. Now I am recommend, and I'm going to recommend to anybody that I talk to, take the exam in the spring. So I recommend March or April so that by May, June, you have your test results back and you can confidently apply to medical school. So medical school applications can be submitted in June of whatever year 
uh, you're applying therefore you will want your MCAT results back so that you know that you're gonna apply with whatever score that you have right the last thing you want to do is work on your application and take the test in September and then you totally bomb the MCAT and now you're stuck between applying and not applying so I recommend that you take the MCAT early if you do terrible then you also have additional time to retake the exam to add to your application before submission deadlines and then also if you do well then you just do well then you're done with it right so the cost right now is $320 to take the exam they do have a financial assistance program or something I forget exactly what it's called but if you go to the AAMC website you can figure out how to apply for their program and if you qualify then you will be able to pay a reduced price for the exam which I believe is $130 along with other benefits that come along with that program but know that it costs $320 um, just to go ahead and foreshadow some things for you guys like the MCAT is fairly cheap compared to the board exams that you have to take in medical school and in residencies those can get up to like the thousands so it's still an expensive exam it's not something that you want to like have to take over and over but knowing that you know knowing how much it costs definitely uh, helps so my fourth tip kind of goes along with the previous tip as far as when to take the exam I think understanding the medical school application timeline is key to actually scheduling your MCAT exam. So like I've said in previous videos, um, if you want to start medical school a certain year, then you will most more than likely need to take the MCAT a year prior to the year that you want to start. So for example, if I want to start medical school August of 2023, then I will need to take the MCAT in the spring semester of 2022 because I'm going to apply the summer of 2022. Okay, so that is how you have to determine when you should take the MCAT exam. Now for people who have the question of hey I'm about to graduate college I just I'm just now deciding to pursue medicine I haven't taken the MCAT exam I don't know anything about it I haven't studied should I delay my uh, college graduation should I do a post back should I do a biomedical master's degree I am all for delaying graduation or doing an extra year to get a master's or something like that so that you can get that one year in that will cover your prerequisites as well as give you the opportunity to effectively study for the MCAT. So if you're a person who needs that extra time to study for the MCAT or you just don't feel prepared, maybe you are a sophomore or a rising junior and you just don't feel prepared for the MCAT and you want to take more time to study because average studying for the MCAT is like two months to six months. But everybody won't fall in that category. Some people can study for like a month and score well and some may have to study for the entire year you know just to barely make it it's different for everybody but understanding the MCAT timeline knowing that if you take it if you want to apply to medical school a certain year you should definitely take it the spring semester before you submit your application also know that it takes four weeks for uh, your MCAT scores to be reported back so make sure you give yourself enough time to actually know your score before it's too late to submit your application and then also understanding like the process to retake in the MCAT people ask me all the time are you allowed to retake the MCAT and the answer is yes but they do have limitations on how many times you can retake the test so within one year you're only allowed to take the test three times within two consecutive years you're only allowed to take the test four times and then overall you are only allowed to take the exam seven times in one lifetime and that's all we get so right <laughs> so make sure you're keeping up with the number of times you retest uh, in my opinion it's better to give yourself enough time to study for the exam before retesting versus trying to like rush it and get it out of the way like I said if you have to like do a master's program or a post back or delay graduation a year or so I definitely recommend that if it means you're going to optimize your application and do extremely well on the MCAT. And then number three, I think it's very important to just kind of like know the formatting of the actual exam. Knowing how long it is, how many sections there are, what kind of breaks do you get, how long are the breaks, should you take advantage of the breaks, yes, take advantage of every break that you get. Understanding the style of questions, and this just comes from doing practice questions. 
um, you know, knowing that there are going to be some questions that are kind of what they call like uh, standalone questions that are not tied to some type of passage. Understanding what they're actually looking for and what they actually want you to take away from the question. And that just comes with reading the information that the AAMC offers you and then number two, doing practice questions. And then the number two thing that I think you guys need to actually really understand is that you cannot underestimate this exam. And I talk about this on my video where I talk about my MCAT experience and how I underestimated the exam. I regretted it so much um, and I want to just stress to you guys not to do the same thing. This exam is like no other. If this is your first professional degree that you're working towards, if you're not like already a lawyer or something else already, then you have no idea what to expect on this exam. Like it is not for play play. It is not for the weak. Do not underestimate this exam, please. Like, this is more of a personal, individualized tip, right? This is for the person who is saying, oh, I'll be all right. And they don't put in the effort. They don't put in the time. That was me my first time around, okay? This is for you. Please don't underestimate the exam. It is better to over-prepare than under-prepare. Please don't underestimate the exam. And then obviously the biggest question of all is like preparation and using study material to prepare for the exam. So I think there's two parts to actually being ready for the exam is the information and like what you study and then also how you study. Okay. And the how is very important because the information doesn't change, right? Facts are facts. I don't care if you read it out of your textbook or if you read it out of a Kaplan textbook or if you get it from practice questions using UWorld or if you're talking to somebody, um, you're doing a study group and they teach you some concept, the facts don't change. But what matters is how you as an individual prepare for the exam. What works for you? What is going to help you actually know the material versus memorize the material versus recognize the material? All right, you need to be at the no material level so that you can effectively take the exam because another thing that it tests is your endurance and your pacing okay and those are two things that I screwed up the first time I took the test so when I took it the first time I literally ran out of time on some of my questions I had to guess because my pacing was off and then by the time I got to the end of the exam I could barely think like I could barely understand the questions because I had already like lost that stamina and endurance like I was literally tired exhausted I could barely read I was rereading questions and things weren't making sense because I didn't build up my endurance so make sure you are actually studying the information and then also learning how to take the exam learning how to sit in one spot for eight hours to take a 200 something question exam like that's not something that people do all the time right Okay, so you have to train yourself for that. You have to know that before you start studying because you want to go ahead and start building up those skills right now when you first begin, not a couple of weeks right before the exam, which is another mistake that I made. So that is my advice for you guys. I think you should definitely explore those categories before you even begin studying. Okay, and if you're already studying, go ahead and just reevaluate your situation right now what do you need to implement what do you need to focus on more okay and then for you guys who are interested to talk about the MCAT more in detail I will have a video that follows this one that talks about the actual structure of the MCAT how many questions the timing all of that type of stuff the concepts the what, what they're testing all of that type of stuff okay coming soon so look forward to that video i hope this was helpful and you guys have a great day